Here's a look at what we have on this week's show. Gulf War veterans choose to leave something behind to help others. Retro music was a big hit for veterans again this Valentine's Day. And Salt Lake City veterans and VA volunteers make transitional housing feel a little more like home. Those stories and more are coming up, so stay with us. Hello, I'm Jose Yamas with the Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs. And I'm Yvonne Rannells with the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Thanks for being with us today. Twenty years after their service in Kuwait, Gulf War veterans are donating tissue and bone samples to VA's first biorepository. It's located at the Southern Arizona Healthcare System. Here's a report courtesy of KOLD-TV in Tucson. It's actually called the Gulf War Veterans Illnesses Biorepository, or Brain Bank. It started in Tucson in July, and it's the only one in the nation. We actually collect the tissue, we process the tissue, and we delegate the tissue to freezers for future storage for researchers. You'll notice it's called the Illnesses Biorepository. Gulf War veterans can have several health issues in various combinations, all believed to have a common cause in the nervous system. Fatigue. Um, uh, musculoskeletal pain, indigestion. Dr. Victor Kalasinski is the research program manager and came to Tucson from Washington, D.C. to talk about the brain bank. He says scans such as MRIs on patients can tell researchers only so much. We haven't been able to give a definitive answer to the veterans about what's what's been bothering them all these years. Researchers say that's why the need for donated brain and spinal cord tissue, it's the next step in the process. It's impossible to deal with um, just one issue where the Gulf War veterans are concerned. Uh, and, and the brain bank is a way to get at some of the uh, neurological problems. Gulf War veterans are starting to hear about the brain bank and inquiring about donating their tissue when they pass on. The results of the research would uh, would be put into um, uh, developing treatments for the veterans who are suffering now uh, and uh, clearly then we would uh, use that uh, to um, try to prevent similar problems from hap happening in future deployments. We don't expect uh, instant answers, but this is a piece of the puzzle that we, uh, we think we need to have in order to get to the final answers. As we previously reported, well-known recording artists of the past and present perform concerts to celebrate the service of our nation's veterans and those that serve them through volunteer efforts. One of our favorite groups, the Shy Lights from the Motor City, perform more than one concert. Our colleague Tom Olam sent us this video from the Shy Light sold out concert at the Columbus, Ohio Aladdin Shriner Center on Valentine's Day. This is a great event to, uh, for veterans to uh, get out and, uh, and have a good time and for us to, uh, to honor veterans uh, and uh, see a really good show. The main thing is the veterans, you know. Uh, I'm mean, hopefully I'll get them all out there. See, we'll walk around and march around the theater tonight. You know, uh, we're going to be doing what we have to do. We're going to have fun. When you do something like this for them, they feel it in their heart. I know I do. I feel it in mine, and and I think it's really great. Everywhere I go, on the street, and even at the bridge 
A building renovated to house and treat the homeless at the George E. Wallen VA Medical Center in Salt Lake City was a little lacking. There was no kitchen, so VA employees and veterans decided to build a self-sufficient diner, a place to grab a bite to eat and a drink. Our colleague Scott Malone at the Salt Lake City Medical Center sent us this video. Freedom Diner, a community diner for residents of Freedom Landing, recently opened, and according to residents, it couldn't have happened soon enough. Like basically a godsend because most of us are, we, we move into our, our place and we all, all we have is a refrigerator and a microwave and some of us love to cook and people, people have been wanting more and now we actually have stoves, we have ovens, we have a giant refrigerator. It's, it's going to be real helpful with, for everyone. Veterans and volunteers packed into the new space to celebrate the opening of Freedom Diner. A warm meal was prepared in the new stainless steel ovens with supplies from the fully stocked cupboards. The diner will provide members of the Freedom Landing community a place to gather and prepare their meals. The HUD VA supportive housing project, Freedom Landing is a converted hotel on North Temple in Salt Lake City that provides housing units for homeless veterans. Freedom Landing is a facility for homeless veterans. There's 110 units um, for both transitional housing and permanent supportive housing. And so while veterans are here, they receive case management, they receive all types of clinical services, um, employment um, services, um, with the goal to one day move out into the community and, and be self-reliant. Oh, this this program has done a lot for me. Um, I was uh, suffering from some, uh, I'm suffering from like post-traumatic stress, uh, depression, anxiety, and ever since I've been here, uh, they've been helping me out with uh, my medication and uh, getting me up to the VA. On, and it's just been a great program all, the, all around. It's been a real blessing because the people here are real friendly. I mean, just, I, I can't, I don't know how else to put it. They help you with food, help you get a job. And it's just been, it's just been, a, it's been a joy. I've been here, well, off and on for three years. And I'm happy. That's all there's to it. I mean, people here are just, they're willing to bend over backwards to make sure you have and you have what you need. The renovation is just one more piece of the puzzle to help VA meet its goal of ending veteran homelessness by 2015. We're at a place where we're literally turning over every stone to find a homeless veteran. So we're meeting as a community together on a weekly basis to identify chronically homeless veterans that maybe have an access to VA system. And so part of our goal is to end homelessness for really every veteran, at least at least let them know that we're available, that we're here, we're here to help them. And we're at a point now where we're getting down to the very last veteran. The 2012 edition of Federal Benefits for Veterans, Dependents, and Survivors is available to download from VA.gov. The highly popular handbook offers an all-inclusive look at pensions, service-connected compensation, home loans, education benefits, burial and memorial benefits, and much more. It even offers addresses and phone numbers for VA medical centers, clinics, mobile telehealth centers, regional offices, and national cemeteries across the nation. The Benefits Handbook has always been one of the top two or three most read federal government publications. You can easily download an English or Spanish edition at the web address on the screen. We don't have a video story on this remarkable woman, but since March is Women's History Month, we wanted to be sure you read about Jersey Jeannie Goldie Sanitate on our web pages. An Air Force and National Guard veteran, Jeannie says sports has changed her life and given her tools to deal with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Her MS symptoms began in the early 80s, but the diagnosis did not come until 1999. The story by VA Hans Peterson tells us about her bravery and perseverance. Read how Jeannie refuses to slow down competing in VA's winter sports clinic, wheelchair games, and the tea tournament, and in events including biathlon skiing, curling, snowboarding, kayaking, trap shooting, golf, and hand cycling. There's a lot more to Jeannie, too like her involvement in helping returning troops submit claims for service-connected disabilities. Check it out. It's a great read.
Did you know? VA community referral and resource centers, called CRICs at VA, are going up in cities and towns across the country to help homeless and at-risk veterans. The latest were opened on the same day recently in Akron and Cleveland, bringing to 17 the number of CRICs nationwide. A large crowd came out for the opening of both new centers, this one in Cleveland. A number of Cleveland VA medical centers and Vizin 10 officials, city, county, state, and federal representatives were there for both ribbon cuttings. This building will house the Resource Center, which will provide veterans with respite from the cold, services to help them get healthy, both physically and mentally, clothed and housed, and connect them to community services. That's all we have for this week. We're really glad you could join us. I'm Yvonne Rannells. And I'm Jose Llamas. In the next VA News, we'll have a story of history in the making for 150 years. Have a great day at VA, or wherever you are. We'll see you next time.